How's it going guys? Salve from more social a thousand. Today is September 28, 2020. And today we're going to take a look at the Atlantic tropical hurricane season as of right now, which has been quite as recent. The last tropical storm we witnessed is tropical storm Beto, which made landfall in Texas, bringing a lot of rain over that region. But it's been about a week since that storm made landfall and we haven't seen any sort of disturbances or any sort of storms form since and however that could quickly change going into this weekend as currently the national hurricane center is giving a 50 percent chance of tropical cyclone formation within the next five days and only a and as of 448 hours though it's at zero percent chance as currently the, the disturbance at the national hurricane center is referring to currently isn't over this region as um yet and there isn't really sort and you can't really see the discernments right now however over the next several days that will change as a cutoff low that's going to come down through the gulf of mexico later um later tonight and into tomorrow will come down far south enough to where it'll uh, it'll combine with some of the thunderstorm activity that's occurring as a result of a lower level high pressure that's bringing um winds that's bringing a decent amount of winds over the warm um caribbean sea water that's enhancing thunderstorm activity and once that cutoff low combines we could see we could see just enough energy for a tropical disturbance of some kind to form in this region and the national hurricane center as of right now is giving this a medium 50 percent chance of developing which is up from the last hour when I saw this. So there's definitely gonna be something to watch, especially if you're along um, the Yucatan Peninsula, around Belize, Guatemala, definitely be watching, um, definitely at least be aware of this because it's it's possible that you could see a tropical disturbance of some kind um, with it going into this weekend and could form into tropical storm gamma, which I think is the earliest that we've ever seen tropical storm gamma and we're currently on pace to have a record breaking season and beat the two out and currently we're outpacing the um the current currently the biggest um hurricane season which was 2005 hurricane season by a whole month so this has been just quite an active hurricane season and we're still far from over it's it's not even october yet and October is still known to be a very strong month and and too many hurricanes, strong hurricanes made landfall fall or at least impacted the um, some of these Atlantic countries to underestimate um, the October October for the hurricane season. So let's currently look um, at the infrared satellite loop as of right now and you see that there isn't really anything that um, there isn't really much of a disturbance of anything over this region where the National Hur Hurricane Center is forecasting a tropical disturbance to form. However, it will come eventually once it's cut off below from the jet, from a big dip in the jet stream that's going to dip down to the southeast. is going to pretty much move further south and enhance some thunderstorm activity to potentially create a tropical disturbance. And um, in terms of other um, areas you might be um, wondering about, there is this area of thunderstorms. However, this has no chance of developing at all because mainly because there's going to be far too m much wind shear and it's pretty much um, it's pretty much directly related to the jet stream dip over the U.S. and it's going to move along with it and bring heavy rainfall along the east coast these this thunderstorm activity however there will be a cutoff low associated with this jet stream and um and um thunderstorm activity that will move further south and and it will sort of be the trigger that will that could potentially um form a low a well-defined low pressure system off the coast of the yucatan peninsula so um i'm gonna show you this on the gfs current model run which um and this is as of about today, about six hours from now. And for the most part, it's accurate. We're seeing thunderstorms throughout the northern Gulf of Mexico. However, we do see a dip in the jet stream just um, towards the tail end of this, um, towards the tail end of this dip in the jet stream or this cold, this cold front that's moving across the U.S. And 
um, there will be that piece of energy that will move further south as a result of low pressure system that's currently over um, the land of Metsco and that'll sort of um, bring some of that thunderstorm activity further south and then eventually a ridge that's currently over the Caribbean Sea will, will steer this thunderstorm activity further south and we'll see thunderstorms moving from um, and we'll see those thunderstorms move over the Yucatan Peninsula as we head 36 hours from now, which is about a day and a half from now, going into Wednesday, September 30th. So um, definitely keep in mind along the Mexico coast, especially around the Veracruz region, where we could see a little bit more of an enhanced risk of flooding as a result of this um, higher rainfall potential as a result of this cutoff low. And then as that cutoff low meets the Yucatan Peninsula, you see that um, this is the cutoff low itself won't be the disturbance that the National Hurricane Center is referring to in their five day tropical outlook. Um, however, it will be the trigger that will enhance the thunderstorm activity in this region and, and increase the energy for a lot of these thunderstorms to form into something more than just uh, a broad area of thunderstorms and potentially a tropical cyclone going into next week because you see that as the cutoff low lingers over the Yucatan Peninsula you see that there begins to be thunderstorm formation right around this area and going 102 hours from now we see a well-defined low pressure form and going in and checking out the European model the European model has been agreeing for the most part that will that we will see something form um, just off the coast of the Yucatan Peninsula. However, the European model is forming it a little bit further out to sea than currently what the GFS is forecasting, and um, that may, and that might mean that since the European is a little bit further is forming this tropical cyclone a little bit further out. That may be a problem because it'll have a little bit more time over water and it and um, it'll be less affected by land in this scenario and could potentially move north of Yucatan Peninsula. However, going beyond five days from now, I don't like to go beyond five days when it comes to uh, when it comes to forecasting because then it gets a little bit to um, then it becomes um, very difficult to forecast. However, in the European and the GFS scenario going six days out, they both take it over the Yucatan Peninsula. And the fortunate thing is that once it does, it weakens it. And um, however, the, um, however, the GFS is taking a much stronger storm just off the coast of the Yucatan Peninsula, but then weakens it as it goes over. And I think the main reason why is because there's going to be a lot of dry air that's going to be... Um, that's going to be over the Gulf of Mexico going into um, next week because the cutoff low that's with the low that's currently associated with this dip in the jet stream over the U.S. is going to bring a lot of dry air on the back side of it. And that dry air is going to meander over the same area in the Gulf of Mexico. And as the storm moves west as a result of a ridge over Florida, it's going to be difficult for the storm to be able to potentially handle that dry air. However, like I said, five days out, this six days out on forecasting, this could easily change. Um, and also it's good to point out that tropical cyclones um, all have different types of, there are all different types of tropical cyclones. Some tropical cyclones are better suited to fight off dry air than others. So it could easily change depending on how um, this this tropical cyclone forms because if we take a look at the relative humidity um the gfs shows that there's a decent amount of dry air in this region and the gfs kind of um doesn't isn't leaning towards this really fighting off that dry air as we see dry air pretty much um kill off the storm as it continues its check more on westward and the european seems to be agreeing with the same thing as of right now however Again, it could easily change um, days from now. So, um, but however, I would say with confidence that Metsco, you will experience a more enhanced rainfall threat. I would say within the next five days, whether this forms into tropical storm gamma or tropical depression or nothing at all, I would expect a more 
um, enhanced rainfall threat, at least over along the coast of Mexico and um, the Yucatan Peninsula. So definitely watch out for that. And um, in terms of um, could this impact the U.S.? Again, it's still like very far out to a forecast as right now. Um, however, if we take a look at the upper level winds um, to determine whether that'll have an effect of the track of this and what factors could potentially change the fact um, um could change the fact um the track of this storm because um so if we move around this area you see that there's a pretty big ridge of hot um that's currently over the um that's currently over florida i would say and it's currently steering the storm westward along with the upper level winds so um so there is that possibility that if this um if this ridge moves a little bit further to the east that might bring more of a northerly wind to um upper that might bring more northerly upper level winds to this storm and that m might allow the jet stream to dip a little bit more and then maybe steer this up north however um however um we have to see how um how quickly this jet stream moves um to push that ridge um to the north and also i think it's good to point out that if this does move north it's um i find it unlikely that this will um really develop much if it ever does move north mainly because there's just going to be a lot of wind shear if it does move north because um what requires this storm to move up north is we need to see a big dip in the jet stream and the uh, um, jet stream will be, bring strong upper level winds that'll kind of make it a little bit difficult for this storm to form. However, at the same time, it might enhance the storm's winds along the eastern side because the eastern, the lower levels of the eastern side of this storm will coincide with the stronger upper level winds. Um, however, I just don't see this developing as an intense um storm as a result of these upper level winds um um no matter um ha no matter how like strong or how much the width the upper level winds coincide with the eastern side of the storm so um the point being is that this is definitely something to watch if you're in Mexico. i still would say that it's very far out to predict any sort of u.s impact and i certainly don't want to delve into those scenarios just yet because it's very far out um well i just did but um yeah i don't want to make any assumptions right now because there's still a lot of days to go guys and um in terms of this forming um it really all depends on um how much wind shear is going to be currently over the area and as of right now there's little wind shear however again it could change because if this um because if this dip in the jet stream moves a little bit further um westward i mean eastward then there might not be a chance that this develops at all so definitely keep that that in mind over the next several days however i would say for Metsco, um prepare and especially you can say peninsula prepare for more rainy conditions in that region potentially flash flooding because there is because it seems likely that it pretty much seems guaranteed a cutoff flow will move south towards the Yucatan Peninsula and bring more enhanced rain showers across the Yucatan Peninsula and potentially form a disturbance going into this weekend. So, um, yeah, that's I guess that's it for this video. I thank you guys for watching. Um, make sure to subscribe for more content. Um, make sure to like if you like this video and make sure to share with friends and family who might be interested. And I hope you guys have a good day.